Hey guys, it's uh, three days before Christmas and we're actually going to get another shell poured before, before the holidays, before the end of the year, which we weren't sure we were going to, but the, the sun is shining, we're going to go for it. It's not too cold. It's another monopore and it's been a minute since I showed you a monopore. And one thing you'll notice on this pool that we changed up is we're using um, dowel board foam instead of spray foam. Spray foam's just gone out of sight cost wise. It's hard to get, it's hard to get them over here to do it. And the only reason we ever use spray foam is because of along this wall here where it drops to the catch basin, we use that foam as a way to solidify our backfill. And I'll show you in a minute how we did it and I think it's the way we're gonna do it from now on. The, um, the video will show that we actually, but what happens when they dig, this is all dug three dimensionally and then the catch basin digs down to the deep end depth and runs the whole length of the pool because we have a 40 foot spillover over here. When we do that, we, we build that, even though this is a shallow wall, it goes down all the way eight feet down and we cut out and basically create a horizontal joint that can let the concrete flow through and make a three dimensional one piece shell monolithically, which is awesome, but we then have to backfill right next to it, right here, because there's a gap with the dirt. We, I mean, my excavator is really good, but no matter what, there's an eight or 10 inch gap if you just try to fill that in with gravel, it'll try to push the wall, it'll cave in under there and kind of create a, a thin spot in our concrete. So what we actually did this time is we formed up with our legs and I ordered three yards of just footing concrete. It's not really part of the pool, but we filled this gap with concrete instead of trying to fill it with gravel and foam like we've done in the past, you know, to much success, but it's bringing in another sub and just complicating things. This worked awesome. And it was so sturdy. I mean, I could drive a skid steer on this thing and not worry about pushing this wall or trying to bow it or anything. It was the way to go. And like I said, I'm going to show you kind of how we did that later in the vid. But again, just to kind of rehash how we do these monos, we use the Fab 4 monopore legs and their fast foot material to hold the concrete in. You can see it right back behind here. I'll show you in a sec. Um, just kind of how we hold the concrete in from the outside. We start pouring the wall. Everything about this is timing, mix, consistency slump, everything matters to get this to stack, but also not get any cold joints. And um, we have two layers of rebar in the floor, one three inches off the floor, one six inches off the floor. The floor is 12 inches thick. The walls, the spillover wall is 12 inches thick. The engineers always prefer that when we have walls up out of the ground. That is way more um, beefy than like a gunite version would be. The rest of our walls that are in the ground are eight inches thick. So. Um, like I said, we've got a vertical every 16 inches in the, uh, in the walls and tied to the floor mat. And uh, I'll get into the bonding. It's funny because uh, the county keeps you know, changing the, uh, the way they interpret bonding for an ICF pool. Now that we're using eco finish, it's simpler because we don't have a uh, cement based uh, plaster that's away from the concrete shell. They used to make us bond that and it was kind of crazy. So now that we're using eco finish, we're free of that part of it but you can see the bond wire tied into the floor here but anyway we're going to get this pour going here in about uh, an hour the pump truck's just pulling in now and we will uh show you during the pour okay so i'm going to do this from a little different angle and the wind may be so bad that i have to do a voiceover on this after the fact but this is a new one we've got here on the james river and it's just a regular it's not a sport it goes from shallow slope to deep end here it's an eight foot deep end and it'll have a spillover on the entire 40 foot length of the uh, cider. So we're using 12 inch box blocks, uh, 12 inch core ICF. And uh, you can see the catch basin drops down to the deep end depth. So it's eight foot from the top of the water as well. Um, the one thing we always struggle with, um, unless we're using like an engineered lime sand fill that we can almost carve like a sand castle, is this overdig here. We need to actually bring our gravel right over to the wall and that puts so much pressure down at the bottom over time as it settles it tries to you know warp and move our wall so we've done a few different things we've done our spray foam to kind of connect and that helps but it's not a perfect solution we're actually going to pour about two and a half yards of just footing concrete in here it's got nothing to do with the actual actual pour i'd really just almost call this uh better than dirt because if we could actually carve the dirt just with, with a laser and put the ICF right up against it, the wall that we'll have 12 inches of concrete coming across here, 
going through the ICF as you've seen us do in the past and you'll see on this video we carve out the ICF just leaving the webs so the concrete can free flow into the wall and get a monolithic wall and floor that's all connected uh, by, in a one piece concrete concrete shell so again that, that's one thing that's kind of always tripped us up a little bit and uh, that's the kind of stuff we'll be addressing in all the training we're doing next year is uh, just the little details like that that if you're trying to get real fancy just these little little things like this make a big difference okay just to kind of give you we poured really dry footing concrete just cheap footing mix like an L3000 and uh, now they're gonna just bring the gravel over like they always do and we're not worried about it trying to cave in especially after tonight this will cure out and we'll be able to drive the skid steer near it if we want to we probably won't but it gives you a lot more freedom than the way we've done it in the past okay so now you can see what it looks like when we get the gravel done right before we start stacking the blocks removing the 12 inch strip along the gravel so the concrete can flow through and uh you know bringing in the dowel board and this has been the best method we've used thus far Okay guys, I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough from the outside, just a real quick tour, um, so I can kind of explain a few things. So as you can see, the, the, we filled in you know, that with the concrete, like I said. Then we've got the 12 inch wall, but it goes all the way down to the catch basin depth, which is, you know, obviously, this is sort of a three dimensional thing, but it's all one piece, and that monopores as well, okay? And we've got the three linear main drains running in series through there. Um, each one has two or three two inch ports dropping into a three inch line. So we can get plenty of flow pulling out of this catch basin, running back into the pool. So I'll, from down here, I'll just try to kind of show you, this two by four is only on there to provide us with a perfectly straight grade, just right under that two by four. But as you can see, the monopore has got 12 inches of concrete going under, but it walks uphill and now you know the the catch you know the slope goes up but then the the uh catch basin's flat at eight foot down so this is like a three-dimensional the wall goes up eight feet it has a flat surface coming off that way and then the slope floor of the pool goes this way it honestly makes an incredibly strong shell to tie everything together that way we've got the two main drains here and then over here, I'll just kind of give you, we've got way down deep, we've got a um, micro bright LED. We got another one there, there, up here. And then we've got another one. We have six total. We got another one coming in to the, uh, there's, a, there's a shelf, a uh, tanning shelf and stairs coming in. So we'll have light coming out of there as well. Then we have heat lines there, there. We got another six heated returns and then this bank right here this little uh manifold that will be on the back side with um 10 that's just the spillover returns so we'll, when we're pulling out of the catch basin blowing it back in that's what actually creates our waterfall so we make we always probably overkill that a bit to make sure we're getting plenty of water spinning through this pool so the waterfall um really works like it should and that spillover just creates that nice infinity edge on this pool, especially with that river being down below, it's just um, just going to be a perfect view. As you can see the view here, we're doing a little different thing up here where the spillover is everywhere you see in that OSB. The reason for that specifically is um, we're doing something a little different. With, with the eco-finish process we're doing, we're still kind of uh, learning a couple little nuts and bolts that make life easier. And uh, we're just kind of doing that a little different. So there's actually a four inch thick cap that will go on top of the ICF so the ICF doesn't protrude through the top of the wall, the concrete caps, and that's just to make it easier on our finishing end. But check out that view with that river back there. This pool is gonna be pretty sick. Okay, so the boys at Roast Concrete Pumping showed up to lay waste with me, and I'll show you guys in a minute how come great equipment is as important as good mix, good labor, good design it all goes together in a synergy that makes this very complex pour simple um, you can see we're starting to place the concrete here my, my boys prefer to stay off camera so there's nothing really magical about what they're doing it's it's really more mix consistency manipulation of the mix and all that there's nothing other than that that's overly magical so um, you know we got all the concrete placed and moved on 
Okay, guys, real quick, I just wanted to show you, if you get the consistency right, it is, you know, it's still very workable. That's about a four slump, and we're actually stacking that up to right here easy with it barely running out. We don't have any fast foot down here because we want to be able to um, get to everything. So I just wanted to kind of show you, everything is consistency. Most flat work guys and concrete guys are going to, um, you know, go for workability over strength because the more water you put in concrete, the weaker it becomes. Uh, we usually, if we want workability for some reason, we generally use a, uh, a product called Plasticizer to add flowability without adding water. It doesn't last very long. It will last just long enough to work it, and then it goes back to being pretty stiff. So we're going to keep going on around the pool with the next two trucks. The first three trucks, because it's pretty cool out, we went ahead and threw 2% um, calcium in it, and then we lowered the calcium amount for the rest of it so we can make sure we get no cold joints. But I just wanted to kind of show you how well it can stack if you get the mud right. If you, uh, if you let your concrete guy talk you into a six or a seven, you don't get to do a monopore like this. So very important. So this is kind of a cool little uh, thing. They've got this air coupler on their uh, hose that can shut down the concrete in a second, which is part of the control I talk about with good pump drivers. It's so good that we're pouring that at a four. And look at that, look at that dingleberry of concrete hanging because of the suction that that thing creates. Instead of letting all that concrete dump into that I may or may not want, it literally stops it. I mean, I could shake that little bit out, but that's pretty cool. Okay, guys, we uh, just got this pool poured yesterday and stripped everything this morning. It is uh, basically ready for, we, we go ahead and put stairs and a, a tanning ledge in here, but other than that, it is ready for what we do with the eco finish. The plumbing and backfill will come first. We'll pour the coping and uh, like I said, it is December 23rd, so we're going to throw concrete blankets in here because we won't be back till after the first of the year. It's not actually going to get below freezing in the uh, vulnerable period for the floor, and, uh, but we're just doing it as a precaution. We're going to throw the blankets down with a 12-inch floor with a thermal break under it. It's not overly concerning anyway. But uh, yeah, so pour went great yesterday. We were kind of blessed to get to squeeze one in before the, uh, before the end of the year. This time of year, it's kind of you know, do or die when you get a chance to pour. So, turned out awesome. This pool is going to be killer. I mean, the setting is really top notch. So, really looking forward to bringing you guys the finish video later on in the spring.